Hello. It's been a very long time since my last upload. I'm aware of that, but studying and life in general has come a bit in the way. I really wish that I could make videos every week, but it's very tricky to find the time. Anyway, I found this report, which was published now on the end of November this year, and it's about a woman from Syria who's been living at our Swedish refugee centers. Her story is severely fucked up on several different levels, so if you're in a happy sunshine type of mood, this might really not be the video for you. But what has happened to this woman I think is very important to know, especially when you're talking about completely unregulated immigration of refugees and asylum seekers to Sweden. So I just thought that we could read this through, I'll talk some shit about it, and you can give me a line in the comment section about what you think. The Asylum Report, a unique survey from the waiting rooms of Sweden. 1,691 voices from 18 asylum centers. Part 5, The Second Escape. The men expect you to have sex with them. Maria, her name is actually something else, fled from war and a violent husband in Syria, and she's kept fleeing in Sweden. She's afraid that her chances of being allowed to stay are ruined because of what she's been through, and that she'll never be able to see her kids again. But Maria tells about how young women who come to this country alone are harassed at the refugee centers. If you don't have a husband, the male refugees expect you to have sex with them. After months of threats, physical abuse, and sexual assaults, she was finally forced to leave the refugee center. Okay, so this woman is 28 years old, and she's been experiencing our Swedish refugee centers firsthand. She's gotten raped, videotaped while being raped, and then threatened to have the film shown to her family if she doesn't do as a rapist says. Okay, this is happening in Sweden. Not some throw acid in your face theocratic cancer of a country. Sweden. So, this woman fled her piece-of-shit ISIS-supporting husband, who beat her so bad that she ended up at a hospital for a long period of time. She then fled to Sweden, only to then be raped and beaten by the same type of men here. Men coming from a culture where if you as a woman get sexually abused, everyone just tells you to shut up about it, they tell you not to make such a big deal. And after realizing that her husband wouldn't be satisfied with nearly beating her to death, a friend of Maria sold her an expensive gold bracelet, gave Maria the money, and told her, go to Sweden, they treat women well there. She managed to make her way to Sweden with the help of the Red Cross and get her own room at a refugee center, and she was excited and wanted to try to get her children to come and live with her in Sweden and begin her new life as a free woman. But it didn't take long before a man at the refugee center assaulted her and she managed to, with the help of another man, contact a migration agency and the police who relocated the man. Alright, so they relocated him so that some other woman somewhere else in Sweden had to deal with him instead. This man had sexually assaulted women before and underwear and bras had been found under the mattress in his room which he had stolen from the washroom at the refugee center. This perverted piece of human garbage was relocated, not deported. But I'm just a racist, right? I mean, who knows what he's been through? Poor guy. Maria clenches her fists until her knuckles turn white, and she says that the women who come to Sweden do experience greater equality, but the men also experience a new type of freedom. She says, when some men come to Sweden, they think, I'm free, I can do whatever I want. I can drink, I can have sex with any woman. Because in our country, she says, it's forbidden to drink, and if you want to have sex, you have to go to a brothel. Huh. So in Sweden, they don't feel the need to go to visit a sex worker, they just grab any Swedish woman instead. Well, isn't that nice? She says, now they think they can do whatever they want. They think it's a free-for-all. Here I just want to stop reading for a minute, just to tell you that this newspaper who published this report, Expressen, is one of Sweden's biggest rapists defending jihadi huggers. They have non-stop been selling the idea that all refugees are academics, who are all civilized and peaceful, and that they're even going to rescue our failing pension system through the giant influx we're going to get when they all start working and paying taxes. But they are now, through this text, basically admitting themselves to having been the biggest fucking liars in the country. I have no idea why they suddenly are trying out how it feels to be honest, but perhaps they fear a Trump-style Sweden Democratic victory in 2018 if they don't start reporting the truth. Who knows? But I guess it's never too late for a journalist to start acting like a journalist. Maria continues and says that all women who have been traveling alone to Sweden are having these problems. Well, about 48,000 out of the 163,000 people who came to Sweden in 2015 were women. About 10,000 came alone, and 9,300 came alone with children. So let's see. That means that 115,000 men came here alone. 
some of which have ideas about Sweden being a free-for-all without rules. What the hell happened to men being the last to leave a sinking ship? But they're traveling ahead in order to fix their new life for their wife and children. Really? So they're just gonna commit some sexual assaults first and then they're gonna bring over the wife and kids and get a job. Well, that makes sense. But according to statistics from the Swedish Migration Agency, about 71% of all arriving refugees in Sweden are male and about 90% of unaccompanied minors are male. It might also be worth mentioning that this person could be considered to be a minor in Sweden. He will be asked to do a print on his teeth in order to establish his real age, but if he has any form of brain, he's going to say no to that offer since he can then no longer claim to be a child. Our migration agency cannot force him to do it either since that would be oppressive. Let's keep reading. Women who have lived under oppression, meaning Islam, think that they will be free in Sweden, but they soon realize that this freedom doesn't include all, and especially women who travel alone learn this firsthand. The problem is growing bigger and bigger, says Gulan Avshi, who was a chairman at the organization Liberala Kvinnor, which means liberal women. She says, The migration agency have failed, both in handling the giant migration and they've failed in that they haven't had conversations with the girls and women who have come to Sweden alone. We're facing a vast lack of knowledge among government authorities. If you don't have a clear picture of the situation and you place women at risk together with asylum-seeking men who come from countries where honor culture is part of the societal norm, this type of oppression has the ability to keep existing. There also exists a problem with the support system for the women who are victims of rape and physical abuse. Why should the women have to relocate? Why don't the authorities relocate the men instead? I agree with her, but I fail to see how there is any point in shipping rapists back and forth across Sweden to different refugee centers on the taxpayer's dime. I would instead recommend deportation, since these individuals are clearly fucking psychopaths that have no right to live in this country at the expense of women. But the countries they came from won't accept them back in the country. Well that's tough, how the fuck is that Sweden's problem? Well then we just have to stop giving them financial aid. If their rapists are coming over here and being a cost on this country, well then I guess we can't spend any money on theirs. The man who had helped Maria at first from being raped soon demanded sex from her in order for her to repay him for helping her. He also took her cell phone, a key to her room, and began telling her who she could and could not speak to. She was scared of him, and in the beginning of July she got handed a note with an address by another woman at the refugee center, so she packed her bags and left the center and got on a train. Let's just pause here. So this woman would rather flee from the refugee center, get on a train in a foreign country and head to an address scribbled on a piece of paper, than stay where she lived and was supposed to be offered safety by the Swedish government. Just let that sink in. So eight months later, Maria was fleeing again but this time in Sweden. She got kicked out from the place where she got the address since the woman who lived there with her husband, both of them from Syria, didn't like the way her husband was looking at her. Maria was told to visit several refugee centers, all at which she didn't feel safe or again got assaulted by male refugees who didn't leave her alone. Maria thinks that her husband and her children should come to Sweden because then no one would assault her. She says, He has promised to not touch me anymore, and he says that he loves me. Olga Persson, who is the secretary general at the women's protection organization Unison, says that Maria's way of reasoning is very common for abused women. She says, Nine out of ten women who are the victims of domestic abuse do not press charges. Olga says that this reluctance to press charges against abuse from women at refugee centers is something that will have consequences for a long time to come. In Maria's case, her abuse was actually reported, but that was six months ago and nothing has happened since. She was placed at another center since we were last in contact with her, but she was yet again threatened and abused by the men there. We also made contact with the head of unit at the migration agency who says that they consider themselves to have followed their routines and guidelines and have done everything they can for the woman. You could say that all of this maybe just is made up by a newspaper who have nothing to gain from actually speaking the truth about what they've been denying and what other people have been saying for years. Perhaps Maria doesn't even exist, but that really wouldn't make any sense, would it? Especially since these problems are very real. Gulan Avci, the chairman at the organization Liberala Kvinnor, has written several articles about the violence being committed against refugee women at these centers, while feminists on the left have remained silent and used cultural relativism as a way to excuse obvious facts about these cultures' shitty views on women. So, once more, Swedish feminists are completely fucking useless. They shame those who actually do something by calling them racists while claiming to care about the protection of women against violence. It's pathetic. 
and our current government have policies and guidelines in place regarding immigration which seem to be designed to do their utmost to make sure that rapist pieces of shit are able to remain in this country while they're still allowed to keep seeking asylum. And the social justice warriors we have in Sweden defend this. I've seen them defending the rape of children by saying that the monster that did it should be excused because he comes from a country at war. Poor thing. It must be difficult for him. I'm sure a bit of rape will make him feel better. Fuck these people. The biggest danger for the safety of women in Sweden today isn't men. It's feminist defenders of rapists, multiculturalists, and cultural relativists. People accuse me of hating immigrants. I don't. I don't give a shit. I don't know every single fucking immigrant. I hate sadistic criminals and the politically correct traitors who defend and enable them. Both of them are complete filth, and I hope that history will judge them harshly. The men doing these acts should be fingerprinted, photographed, deported, and banned for life from re-entering Sweden. I couldn't care less even if I tried that they come from an active conflict area. Fuck off.